Hey guys, it's your boy Tacho here, back for some more Fire Emblem Heroes, and we have the new Bridal Banner trailer here, so apparently it looks like it's going to be Radiant Dawn themed, which is actually pretty cool. I wasn't expecting that, and I don't think too many other people were expecting it either. A lot of people were commenting that it they thought it looked like a Hoshiden Bride Banner, which I think is kind of cool, but... Alright, anyway, let's just go ahead and play the trailer, and let's take a look at the units. Alright, in sickness and in health. Hey, check that out, we got Nyla and... Is that Racin, or is that, um... No, it's gotta be Raphael, right? Because Nyla and Raphael are actually husband and wife. So, that, that's pretty cool, we, we have the final Heron added now. Alright, so Nyla has Bride's Fang. At, oh wait, hold on, let me just double check her color and movement type. Okay, so Nyla is a green beast type unit with infantry class movement. Alright, let's take a look at what her skills actually do now. Alright, so Bride's Fang, 14 might, 1 range, accelerate special trigger, and then at the start of combat, if foe's HP is above or equal to 75% health, inflicts attack speed defense minus 5 on the foe during combat. And if special triggers before or during combat and unit attacked, grant special cooldown count minus 1 after combat. Oh, that's actually pretty good. Doesn't seem like it'll be too shabby if you're running her as a Gale Force unit. Because, of course, Gale Force activates after combat, so having that minus one cooldown outside of combat is going to be pretty good. And at the start of the turn, if unit is adjacent to only beast or dragon allies, or if unit is not adjacent to any ally, unit transforms, and if unit transforms, gains attack up to and deals plus 10 damage when special triggers. Alright, so that's the classic infantry type effect that these Laguz units get. So, pretty cool stuff. Overall, doesn't seem too bad. I mean, she could be great at using Gale Force if you want, from the all that cooldown reduction she's gaining. Or she could also be used as a Wodao style unit, with the plus 10 damage she gets. So, it's gonna be your choice on how you wanna run the special on this Nyla. She's got Moonbow, Swift Sparrow 3, Shill, Speed and Defense, and Glare. So, Glare is actually a pretty interesting skill. It's locked on Nyla so far, and the OG Nyla in the game has Glare as well. And it's very good, actually, when you're running it on these player phase units, because you can run up and attack the foes, and then essentially just inflict the gravity effect on them. And then possibly either get Nyla out of the way with a skill like Gale Force, or dancing and reposition shenanigans. Or you can just have her move back one space and she should be good. Now, I'm not sure if you can run Repel or Close Call on this Nyla. I'm sure she's gonna have a lot of speed and... Of course, if you were to run Repel or Close Call, then... As soon as she finishes combat, if the foes would survive her attack, then... Either she's gonna move back one space or push the foes away one space. So with Glare, that could actually lead to some pretty cool combos. But I don't remember if Repel and Close Call are locked out of Beast-type units from being able to inherit them. Otherwise, that would be a pretty cool combo. Alright, let's just keep watching the trailer here. Alright, pretty cool attack animation there. Okay, next up we've got Fierce Bride-to-be. Okay, is this Obero? Yeah, okay, it's a sword Obero. Very interesting. Now, I don't know too much about <laughs> Fates, unfortunately, so I don't really know why Obero has a sword, but if you guys want to let me know that in the comments section, that'd be great. Okay, Pledged Blade Plus. This is inheritable by the looks of it. 14 Might. If bonus is active on unit, grants attack and defense plus 4. And special cooldown charge plus one per foe's attack during combat. Oh, that's... Isn't that the breath effect on pretty much only foe's attacks, though? It's not going to be working on her attacks. And only the highest value is applied, does not stack. That's pretty much the case with all of these special ramping type skills. 
So, that's not too shabby, actually, for an inheritable weapon. That's definitely going to be one of the better ones, for sure. With the attack and defense up 4, the light breadth skill, and then you're going to refine it to gain plus 5 HP or 4 defense and res. This is actually a pretty nice inheritable sword here. Okay, she has rally attack and res plus, attack and defense form 3, and odd pulse tie. Okay, this is probably the opposite of the skill that Nils had. So at the start of odd number turns, if any foe's HP plus 1 is, I believe that's less than or equal to unit's HP and the foe, and that foe's special is ready, inflicts special cooldown count plus 2 on foe with the lowest HP among those foes. So not too shabby there, that could be interesting if you're running her on more so on an offense team than a defense one because odd number turns that's going to be turn one turn three and so on so if you have her on an offense team then on the first turn you can actually get this to activate and that's going to help you out a bit especially if you're fighting a team that has infantry pulse shenanigans going on but actually now that i think about this uh Infantry Pulse and, like, Quicken Pulse and all of that stuff kick in at the start of the opponent's turn, right? So, at the start of an odd number turn, like turn one, you're not really going to see the maximum effect of this, like in the case of Nils, because Nils is going to wait that one turn, and then on turn two is when he gets his effect to start to kick in. And that's actually a little bit better <laughs> against Infantry Pulse teams, because... That's after the foes have already used their Infantry Pulse and Quicken Pulse and all their stuff that would reduce cooldown count. Like, also, weapons like its curtains and stuff like that. So, I don't know if this one's going to be better than Nils's version of it, but still pretty cool that we have this. Alright, let's just see what her attack looks like. Okay, pretty interesting. Alright, so I'm pretty sure this is Raphael. Alright, now, he is infantry, this is the case, because if you guys remember in Radiant Dawn, Raphael is a flightless heron, and he's a blue beast type, so Rayson was green, Leanne was colorless, and now <laughs> the big brother is a blue type. So, Groom's Wings grants res up 3, at the start of turn, grants special cooldown count minus 1 to unit's support partner, oh, that's, that's pretty good, it's not too bad, like... Um, who is that? Valoria has minus two special cooldown count to herself and her support partner. So, this one's only doing it for your support partner, but the nice thing is, of course, that this guy is a dancer. So, that could give you a little bit of a different type of support if you wanted it. And at the start of the turn, if units adjacent to only beasts or dragons or no adjacent allies, unit transforms, grants attack up to and plus ten damage when special triggers. So, like we saw with Nyla, it's the same thing for all these infantry beast types. So he's got Sing, Firestorm Dance 2, and Ward Beast. Actually, wait a second, is this guy going to be the demote then? <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, this is not really the most flattering base kit, so... It seems pretty likely that Raphael is going to be the demote here. Which is good, of course. I mean, another free-to-play dancing option. And as we see... <laughs> Unfortunately, Raphael cannot fly. And here's the duo unit. So we have Micaiah and Soth. And Micaiah looking really happy there for whatever reason. Okay, Colorless Tome Flyer. Very interesting. Okay. So step aside, Bramimon. We have the next Colorless Tome type unit in the game. And look at Micaiah just hovering there with her sprite. Okay, Joyful Vows. Effective against armor and cavalry like every Micaiah is. Attack up 3, and if a bonus is active on unit, grants attack and res up 6 during combat. And if unit initiates combat, foe cannot make a follow-up attack. Alright, so it's got a built-in, I guess you could say like mirror impact, sorta, but not quite gaining as much res. And it's got double type effectiveness, so that's very good, especially for a flying unit, that's pretty awesome. Alright, she's got Sacrifice, like every Micaiah has. Attack and Res push 4, Mystic boost 3, and Attack and Res O 3. So, unfortunately, she doesn't have any new skills besides her weapon, but, of course, being a colorless-type unit, 
and having an effect like this is pretty nice. Unfortunately, she doesn't gain um, a guaranteed follow-up attack like some of the crazier player phase mages like Bramimon, for example, and the Fallen Julia. They can do guaranteed follow-up attacks, which would have been a little nicer for her, but still, negating the foe's follow-up is pretty good for adding some defense to her. Alright, well, <laughs> pretty interesting. Hold on, was that a bunch of diamonds that she just threw at the opponents? Alright, and her duo skill is granting dominance to unit and allies within three columns censored on unit. Inflicts defense and res minus seven on foes within three columns censored on unit through their next action. So, dominance, it says here, unit deals additional damage equal to total penalties on foes. Wow! That's the Broadleaf fan effect, actually. Wow, that's... That's a pretty crazy duo skill, actually, if I think about it. If you're debuffing the foes, like... I'm not sure how you would go about doing that. There's, like, tons and tons of ways to debuff the foes. You have the chill skills, you got panic ploy, you got... All the structures in Aether Raids, like the Light Shrine and the Dark Shrine and stuff like that. So... Wow, I mean, <laughs> just being able to grant the broadly fan effect to any unit, that's that's pretty nuts. And then she's also doing defense and res minus 7 on the foes, so she's essentially just giving a bunch of debuffs to the units herself. Wow, that that's a really insane duo skill. Now, I find it funny that she's a flying type unit here, and <laughs> Soth is pretty much just stuck on the ground while... Makaya is just hovering in place like freaking <laughs> Magneto over here. But okay, it's pretty cool that we're getting this brand new status effect here. Dominance was not a status effect that we could get beforehand. So it's going to be pretty interesting to see how this Makaya functions. Of course, she's going to be way better in the player's hands than in the hands of like the opponents because they're not going to be able to use um, what you call it. The duo skill for themselves. And here we have Hinata. So, uh, okay. Scratch what I said way back at the start of the video where I said it wasn't going to be a Hoshiden banner. It actually is. Because we do have Obero and Hinata. But it's also a split with Radiant Dawn. So, pretty cool stuff. And it looks like... Hold on. Yeah, so, like I said, Raphael is going to be the four-star focus unit. That's what I thought. His skills didn't really seem all that like special so if you're trying to summon a copy of Raphael that's probably going to be a good idea he's definitely going to be a better choice to go for as a support style dancer with the minus one cooldown count that he can grant so it's always nice the more units on your team that can give minus one cooldown count the better and it looks like that's all for the trailer so I mean overall I think it's pretty cool I love this artwork by the way for Micaiah and Soth Definitely going to be the highlight summon of this banner, and whether or not you should summon on this banner, I think is going to be completely your call. Mikaya seems like she's going to be insane for sure with her flying type mobility and the dominance effect. That's pretty crazy that she can grant that to all your units. She's going to be way better in the player's hands though, so if, you, if you're planning to run her on a defense team for Aether Raids to try and mess with people... I'm not sure how well that's actually going to work out because she's not going to be able to use the duo skill there. But for all the modes where she is under your control, she is going to be pretty nuts for sure. So that's it for the trailer reveal for this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm definitely very excited about the Radiant Dawn side of things. But, I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of Fates because I haven't played it. So I can't really comment there too much. But as always, guys... This is your boy Tacho signing out. So take care, have a great one, and I'll catch you all again next time.